Hello and welcome to the big picture. After a period of relative bonhomie between India and Pakistan, the verbal warfare over the issue of Jammu and Kashmir once again reared its head this time in the United Nations. None less than the Pakistan President Asif Ali Zardari, speaking at the UN the other day, once again resorted to the old and familiar rhetoric that Jammu and Kashmir is not an integral part of India and even went on to say that Kashmir is a symbol of failures and not the strength of the UN system. The Indian Foreign Minister S.M. Krishna retorted equally strongly asserting that it was completely unwarranted for the Pakistan President to raise the issue while asserting the again old familiar Indian position about Jammu and Kashmir being an integral part of India. It led to Pakistan further asserting that they wanted the UN to find a settlement on the basis of many resolutions passed there in the past. This verbal warfare between India and Pakistan coming as it does just a few weeks after the visit of SM Krishna to Pakistan and the signing of some much welcome confidence building measures has surprised observers. Why has the issue been internationalized once again? What will be the impact of this fresh round of conflict at the international forum on the peace talks between the two countries? Will it mean a setback to possible visit of Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh to Pakistan? We will discuss all this today while looking at why the UN has become a battleground for India and Pakistan once again. To discuss this, I have with me today Ronan Sain, former Indian Ambassador to the United States, HK Dua, Raj Sabha MP and also member of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on External Affairs, Vinod Sharma, political editor of Hindustan Times and Ajay Shukla, strategic affairs editor in the Business Standard. Welcome to all of you, Mr. Ronan Sain. Why this suddenly, you know, uh, Pakistan has raked up this issue and once again back in the UN talking about these things. What do you think is the intention behind this? Oh, this is a familiar routine, I think. Uh, I but know. in the last few years, we had not heard this. Uh, no, I know. But, you know, I think particularly if you have uh, a weak uh, uh, civilian president, government. you know, you should expect them to want to need a prop, if you will, or a crutch. Uh, so it is not, uh, uh, I, I, I would say that uh, they might need a prop and, uh, uh, but uh, what we did is, as you said, you know, internationalize the issue in the sense of by making a big issue out of it. I think it best, best would have been just to ignore it and, uh, and that would have sent the best signal that you can. Uh, but there was a retort and then there was a right to count reply right and to all reply. those things were used this time. Which in, is fact, quite in fact, in the last few years. it was very frankly unnecessary to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you have to, you correct the position on stated on record. It's a different mat matter, but you know, we don't, you know, in the United Nations, very frankly, nobody really cares. Gotcha. But when you, it, it at best provides some entertainment. <laughs> And, and I say, when I say, and even the UNGA as a forum, honestly, earlier you had prime ministers of India would never attend. Jawaharlal Nehru did not attend a single UNGA meeting. Nor did Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Mm. Nor did Rajiv Gandhi, except when he had something to say. Like on the summit. Yeah. He went for the special session. Like on environment. So, so I think we should have... We should treat it, you know, treat the forum as it is and not like, uh, and we had the occasion earlier also to make our points on terrorism, uh, which uh, the, the related issue was there of that comprehensive convention. Right. On which there has been no action, uh, thanks to Pakistan's position, which is, uh, which is reflected also by the majority of uh, um, countries, including by the OIC. So, Mr. Dua, is it best ignored? But, but Indian delegation. government, I mean, the no, Indian what? delegation did not ignore it. You know, they reported they didn't ignored ignore it. And, and then Pakistan retorted, then India again, did, you know, replied. Those are the, I would say, Zardari's statement was a performer statement. I don't think we should give so much importance to Zardari, who doesn't enjoy much importance in his own country. The statement he has made is on behalf of his country, somebody would have drafted it, he has made it. I don't think he would have faith in his own statement. <laughs> he has, he knows Indian position. Most people in Pakistan, most, sen most sensible people in Pakistan are not talking about Kashmir, they're talking about Pakistan itself. Absolutely. That is their worry. 
the world is not taking Pakistan's statements on Kashmir seriously. I thought the best number would have been just ignore Zardari, Zardari's statement. But nevertheless, the delegation must have thought we should go on the record. We have gone on the record. It's right to self-determination. Any number of has times. been exercised and is raking up. That was, that was that has been on the record since Zafrullah and Krishna Manan tapes. Right. Now, that has been our stand. There's no change in the stand. If you ignore it, your stand remains. Ignoring doesn't mean you are endorsing Zardari's statement. But that was the best way to do it, to give too much of importance. Then their delegates come into the picture. Then you are replied. Again, they come into picture. Again, we have the right to reply. Those are the performer kind of noises. It doesn't require much. The world is not going to take seriously. And as uh, Ronin says, General Assembly is not the session where, where these things are decided. <laughs> I don't think this was a serious move. But it will certainly, you, you, you made a point about the talks. This certainly vitiates the atmosphere for the Absolutely. talks. Absolutely. That, that, I mean, that's the point. Uh, you know, certainly how it, far it, will it vitiate the talks? Uh, I don't think Prime Minister's visit to Pakistan was coming in the near future. But if at all it is coming, it vitiates that atmosphere rather than... You know, I, I would slightly disagree with my learned uh, fellow panelists. You see, the, uh, the, first of all, Kashmir is integral to internal discourses within Pakistan and India. And if India had not uh, sort of uh, rebutted, there would have been a huge uproar within the country because foreign policy consensus within India is not existent anymore. I mean, it's not there. And every opportunity is seized uh, by the opposition of the day uh, to make uh, a mountain out of a molehill. One. Two, Mr. Zardari's statement was different from the past because he referred to, and perhaps after a long time coming from somebody at his level, the failure of the UN system, Absolutely. which means allusion to the UN resolutions. Now, uh, since 1972, the Indian position has been candid clear. Uh, that the 72 Simla Pact supersedes the UN resolutions right. and the essence of Simla is bilateralism. Right. Uh, and I think to that extent, there was a need to rebut it and uh, to state our fundamental position because they uh, were stating their fundamental position. Though much had been achieved by way of back-channel talks uh, during Musharraf's time, we remember that at that time the, <coughs> the broadly agreed uh, uh, approach was uh, from uh, a shift from uh, new borders to no borders, you know, mm. to settle Kashmir, uh, <coughs> and uh, that hasn't seen uh, that hasn't materialized, but it remains part of uh, the institutional memory of the Indian Foreign Office and the Pakistani Foreign Office and also the interlocutors. Uh, so I think that there was a need uh, to uh, counter it, and also to uh, tell them that look, uh, if you are going to say uh, that uh, UN resolutions are back on the table, then our position is ample clear that self-determination has already been done through successive elections in Kashmir. That, that's what, uh, that, and I think that, that, that there point. was a domestic dimension to it, uh, by virtue of which Mr. Zardari himself. You see, no prime minister, I mean, no president in Pakistan uh, can give us address to the UNGA and not mention Kashmir. As no uh, leader... And because it was the president saying it, the rebuttal came from the foreign minister. It could have been by a junior official, but then uh, uh, they matched protocol for protocol because he was the senior most uh, person available uh, on the Indian side. So uh, this is my take, and I think that uh, uh, whatever has happened, has happened. It would not vitiate the dialogue for the simple reason that uh, dialogue on trade, dialogue... You see, the Pakistanis, we must recognize this. That Pakistanis today have agreed, uh, have uh, practically delinked de de Siachin from Kashmir. There was a time when they would say that how can we have a standalone uh, resolution of Siachin without addressing the core issue of Kashmir. Similarly, they would not discuss trade, saying that there cannot be business as usual between no. India and Pakistan without resolving Kashmir. No, there has been a nuanced shift from those very rabid positions which were there, which were forced upon the successive regimes by the rabid, uh, you know, right-wingers in Pakistan. And to some extent, certain regimes came to endorse it, you know. Ajay, in fact, uh, taking from where uh, 
we know the, we know this taking saying that you know there, there is a nuanced position in pakistan there was a nuanced position till the other day when pakistan president made this statement so you think you also you you agree with what uh, we know this saying or you think this is a new position which we need to keep a track on uh, i agree partly with what both sides are saying but i i think there's a slight sort of shift in uh, in emphasis uh, i think that the india pakistan dialogue as vinod suggested is really going exactly the way india wants it right trade people's contact all the things that india places emphasis on are being emphasized zardari sister landed in india yesterday yeah absolutely <laughs> there everybody i mean yes. i've i've just come back from lahore everybody wants to go to india now yes. uh, so it's going our way and one odd statement here or there is something that doesn't need to be seen as a major vitiation of this process on the dialogue table we are barely talking about kashmir the siachen dialogue lasts for about 15 exactly minutes exactly the reason why this man had to uh, the pakistan president had to bring this in the un general assembly if one reads the text of zardari's speech it is about everything except kashmir it starts off with a reference to the blasphemous film about the prophet it goes on to the state of pakistan to the expectations to the war on terror and three <coughs> lines somewhere in that speech make this pro forma as mr sen said reference to uh, to to kashmir now after the sh- the sharmal sheik uh, experience no diplomat is going to leave something like that unanswered so it was a given that the indian delegation is going to respond but the response could have been a completely low key measured response that that just says that well the simla agreement is is the spirit exactly. of bilateralism and uh, the un is not the place to talk about this. letting it go and escalate in the manner that it did was a failure of diplomacy uh, if one is to just have uh, a diplomat there saying that if there's a reference to kashmir it must be answered by this thing then you don't need a diplomat you need a computer software system that just responds to it with another thing saying kashmir is ours so i think the diplomats failed to be measured enough invoked a pakistani response and that escalated but also it is a failure of the indian media the indian media has picked it up and blown you, it up into this you war think, you think the thing? pakistan media has not has ignored it almost entirely ignored it <laughs> mr Mr. Sen, you know, is it is it a failure of the Indian diplomacy? Ajay well, thinks that it's a failure. Well, I, I, you know, I said what I, you know, because if you, if you are seen to be, you know, uh, getting into that language, of you know, you said this, I'm going to counter it and restate my position, uh, and then you go back and forth. It it just, uh, I mean, what purpose does it serve, honestly? you should you know at least that country you're not talking of any you're talking of your third largest neighbor a country which is going through a tremendous kind of a transition at the stage we know it we know they're it's going through a internal political transition uh, they are they their identity is inextricably linked with a position on india our identity is not they need a prop we don't vis a vis our position on certain issues people are mature enough in india right you know kashmir is not on, always on their mind with except for certain certain other things you don't have to restate it looking over your shoulders all the time government doesn't have to be so insecure i you know it so a lot of it was totally unnecessary but having said that i think we should now move on, move on. and and as you as, as has been rightly pointed out this has been largely ignored the global media has ignored it it's a non event in pakistan itself it's virtually uh, not not being played up at all so we should let ma- uh, things rest there and carry on okay we will uh, we'll go into a short break now please keep watching and and we'll come back very soon and continue this discussion Welcome back. We are discussing the Indo-Pak verbal warfare in the United Nations, uh, Mr. Mr. Dua. 
do you think you know with the elections in pakistan coming you know is just a few months away and things like that you think zardari was trying to rake up this issue or on for political uh, you know benefit if any i don't think so the statement would have been drafted by the foreign office which he was duty bound to read it i don't think this is going to impact the elections there are other issues as as ajay has pointed out we know that's pointed out there are other indo pakistan issues which are taking importance and they are getting good headlines not this one kashmir they are not talking that much about it and i don't still don't think we should have given that much of importance in case for record sake we were to contradict zardari statement there we putting on the record our head of the head of the un mission could have done one doesn't have to feel foreign ministers to 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 answer zardari on that point that is again giving too much importance to a performer statement they have made we, we not no i again as i i no, do you that, do you think it was it connected to you the see, i to, think to the, the election statement was indeed it was a passing reference but the reference to the failure of un systems that's exactly le- the point and lent itself to an, to an interpretation that pakistan was going back to its originally stated fundamental position now this has been happening consistently ever since ppp came to power right since the departure of mr parvez musharraf if you remember that when certain top leaders of the huriyat went to pakistan and i remember i was visiting pakistan at that time and uh, in one of the meetings they had with uh, choudhry shujaat former prime minister and uh, top leader of the pmlq uh, now i am Uh, mentioning this because PMLQ fancies itself as the torch bearer of the Pakistan movement still uh, in Pakistani politics, and he told the, uh, these Huriyat people that uh, uh, UN resolutions are a thing of the past. Let's look ahead, and it was during that period that he condescended to visit India, Chaudhry Shujaat, because these people don't even visit India on the plea on the on the argument that we will not visit your country until. Kashmir is festering and unresolved. So that was the position, and here is the position that he alluded. He refers to the failure of UN systems, and mind you, the 1972 pact is a pact ratified by the Parliament of Pakistan and still remains ratified by the Parliament of Pakistan, and it was backed by the 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 forefathers of Mr. Aswandiyar Wali Khan. and also the forefather of uh, mufti mahmud the father of uh, uh, you know this um, uh, top i forget his name another top leader who's now uh, supporting the government but now he's out of the government now i am saying that this required a rebuttal and i don't would call it a warfare because you know if you remember the early 90s when kashmir was on the boil and what kind of language pakistan would use and what would be the indian rebuttals Pakistan would say and I remember January 1st 1994 when Mr Jain Dixit landed there uh, to conduct a foreign secretary level talk uh, you know uh, the talks were a failure and the advice uh, very condescending advice from the Pakistani side was that we'd be able to move forward we'll be able to have a dialogue with you once you create a propitious climate in Kashmir no from there we have traveled and it's, it's a long, long distance. distance and so today we were while we were discussing the statement by mr zardari and our our external affairs minister mr sm krishna at the same time the nawaz sharif government the the pml government in 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 punjab took a decision to rename the shahdaman chowk a prominent square in lahore after bhagat, bhagat singh. singh so things are changing but at the same time it is very difficult politically for both sides to shut the baggage of past you know mr mr come this takes me back now vinod has gone back to 90s and all that i'll take you to the time when krishna man and sir zafrullah used to debate the question of kashmir's un and right to self determination krishna man and change in indian position the self determination has been exercised by the elections sir zafrullah picked up a copy of one daily newspaper and said one ballot box in jammu had been tampered with so if this is the self determination with <laughs> tampered ballot boxes then what kind of uh, argument krishna manan is giving krishna manan generally didn't intervene he he got up intervened and said has sir zafrullah 
or anybody else in Pakistan ever seen a ballot box? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of retort. <laughs> yeah, that, yes, that, yeah. that kind of retort should have been there. <laughs> yes. As far as this business of electoral politics, domestic we politics goes. Domestic politics, I'm convinced, had nothing to do with this, okay. except for that need, as one of the panelists has said, for the Pakistan president to make that mandate with reference to Jammu and but, Kashmir. But, but, but in domestic politics today in Pakistan, it is Bijli Sadak Pani, it is power cuts, it is the fact that religious fundamentalism is growing. India can be, can, could have written the script for, de, for, for what the politics have come. And all three parties of the ruling coalition in Pakistan, the PPPP, the MQM and the Awami National Party, the three big parties of the ruling coalition are all heavily pro-India parties. Now when a president like that makes a statement, it makes some sense to cut him a little slack, you know. Uh, understand his compulsions. I'm not saying we should have his compulsion. The, 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 I, his compulsions were compulsion? that the Pakistan president, when he goes and talks at the United Nations, has to make that reference to Jammu and Kashmir. And he made a pro forma reference. Oh, but but as, no as we know this pointing out, it's not just pro forma. This, this bringing back the UN, bringing, saying that it is the failure of the UN, it is not just... It is why, why did he India, why? India is as strong a position as saying it is the failure of the UN because the UN failed to get Pakistan to vacate its positions and pull out its forces in accordance with the UN resolutions. So India could have got up and said, indeed, it is a failure of the United Nations. You should have got them. No, but no, 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 Mr. Mr. Ronald, yes. yes. I agree fully. Actually, when you're talking this about bringing this, this UN thing is not something which needs to be. We it need is to worry absolutely, about. you know, we fell into the trap by taking it to the UN itself. We internationalized it. Yeah, that's right. If we had just uh, given a little bit of our time when our, you know, when we are when we are turning around in the mil in the military area, I don't want to go into details. I don't want to go into history, but we could have made the same point. We could have made the same point, but th that is not the issue. The issue is not, you know, that. What we are talking about is a particular context. I still believe that we have just overplayed. Overplayed it. Overplayed it. No, we don't, we, we don't, no, let us, let us. I have watched Benazir. Right. And the twice that she was prime minister, our bilateral relations hit the, hit the rock bottom. Because Benazir most of the time was busy living down the myth of being pro-India. Mm. Now, that myth is also associated to some extent with Zardari. Uh, and it has been from the very start of his tenure when he, he mooted a, a no first use uh, idea of Pakistani weapons against nuclear weapons against India, which was diametrically, which was actually violative of their no nuclear doctrine that they have neutralized our conventional superiority by attaining that capacity, that capability. Uh, so he has, he had to live down that myth of bring, being pro India. He is perceived largely. So that uh, is that, was, that, was, soft his, that was his compulsion. And that to. was his compulsion. But I think that he went a little further. Okay. And that is where the no, one thing comes. Because you know, you know, India's position. You know, I want. I, what will be the impact of it on the future of the peace talks? Will there be? Will this no, have no any impact, impact at, all? at all? You see, you see, this is something which has happened, which has been done, and it which is which, is, which will be forgotten, because peace talks are now moving. At, it, at their own pace, and every issue is not linked, no issue is linked to the other, the core issue. You see, the core issue of Kashmir is there on the table, what they call as the core issue. Yes. We call terrorism as the core issue now. Right. And, but there has been substantial progress on the trade front. There has been substantial progress uh, on, uh, on uh, you know, setting up uh, uh, good communication links between our two countries. There is uh, something on the table about setting up banking links on the across the LOC. Uh, so things are moving in the right direction, Ajay, uh, and they know exactly the point that we're making. When no, things Ajay, are you moving, have, you, you right said you thing. just come back from uh, Pakistan. Hmm. You tell me whether you know there was there has been this talk after Mr. Krishna's visit to Pakistan a few weeks back. There there has been this talk. They have invited the Indian Prime Minister. Do you think? The Indian Prime Minister. What is the, what is the atmosphere there for a for a possible visit of the Indian Prime Minister, and whether this kind of uh, talk can can come in the way of that? You see, the realization amongst the average man on the streets in Pakistan is that this conflict with India has been one big mistake. It needs to be settled. You need to have friendly relations. You need to create mutual employment. 
this whole business of you know the 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 traditional hostility towards india is steadily ebbing away and as trade ties improve it will ebb away further so the 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 question of whether they want the prime minister to visit of course they want the prime minister to visit everybody in pakistan now looks upon india completely differently than they used to they look upon india i would even go so far as to saying to say the way that we used to look upon look at a, a western country in a couple of decades ago so they want the prime minister to come but the set of parameters that will govern <coughs> i beg your pardon a prime ministerial visit are very different india is clear that it has to depend on action against terrorism it has to de depend upon uh, substantive judicial processes against the the suspects in the 2611 cases I think those ones are that. That's as Vinod said. There's a separate dynamic which Mr. is playing. Mr. Mr. Dua, you know, you, you think by bringing this issue, they, they were actually trying to, you know, uh, some sort of uh, apply brakes on India's demand for this uh, action on terrorism. No, no, I don't think it's linked with that. It is linked with Zardari has been wanting to prime minister should come. Sorry, Zardari wants the prime minister of India to visit Pakistan. Yes. He's not getting the dates. Why he's not getting the dates? Because I think there is a view in the government of India that what will he come come back with? What will he get there? By right. can you take this regime, which is to face election soon, seriously? Can you take this regime seriously with when they are facing a situation in Pakistan when they come can't come forward with a major concessions, right? Or what 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 looked like a concession? So I don't think anybody in Delhi is planning for a visit. Okay. Mr. Now, Wilson. possibly by this statement, yes, he's letting his irritation come sure. out. <laughs> the prime minister is not coming. I've, we have been suggesting Mr. to them to come out. With Mr. I think there's a Mr. message Wilson, last, in that. Last words to you before we wind up. No, well, I, I'm not going to the the prime minister's uh, visit. You know, I, oh, do, you, do, yeah. do you agree with Mr. Dua that you know they're showing his irritation because uh, of Indian prime minister's visit not coming through? Or no, I, I, I'll okay. go back to my first remark itself that he needed a prop like Benazir needed a prop. I don't prop, you know, because she had to, she has to make a point, you know, and then she went to extremes like in a public rally, Goli Chalao and so on and so forth in a very shrill voice. The point is not that. I think when you're talking about prime minister visit, there again, I think very frankly, we should not mix up the out uh, visit with an outcome. We okay. never have done it. Okay. Never have done it. We shouldn't do this. Okay. Uh, on that note, it is evident that, you know, maybe there has been a overreaction from the Indian side on, on what the Pakistan president said in the United Nations. But as my panelists are saying it's it's heartening to hear from my panelists that as far as the India Pakistan peace talks and the, and the movement on that road is concerned, there is there is not going to be much problems. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Ronan Sain, Mr. H K Dua, Vinod Sharma, and Ajay Shukla. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow. <laughs>